So I've been waiting all day long for Amazon to get here and they finally showed up almost eight o'clock at night with some parts so I can continue the plumbing of the saltwater mixing station. So I want to show you what some of the things I got. So I got three different packages. The first one. And it is a bushing that looks different than the picture on the website, but maybe that'll work in my favor. So here's the first one. The bushing is used to reduce from inch and a half down to inch and a quarter. So I, I was a big concern that it wouldn't fit, especially the way it looked on the website. The next thing I got was called a banjo bulkhead. It is huge. The fitting will fit this part here. Hold on, let's see if I can unscrew it. <laughs> oh, it probably unscrews backwards. That's right. Everyone kept warning me. They screw backwards. Okay, so this bulkhead with this o-ring type of washer it's a very soft gasket is what was in my container already but it was 10 years old so i got a brand new one and i'm going to put this in the container and out the hole and then i've got a hard plastic ring that it didn't come with but i have from the old one i'm going to put it on the outside uh, from this fitting i'm planning to do an elbow going out some spa flex tubing and then we go to the next fitting which is a gate valve and the reason i picked a gate valve instead of a ball valve is because it's got a smaller footprint. <laughs> I thought this would work out better for me. I mean, will I regret this one day? Probably not. A ball valve is on off. A gate valve lets you dial it, and I'm really not dialing it. I just want to have it wide open or closed, but a regular one was, you know, significantly longer in the section, and I want something that was more narrow. So the plan is to put this in there. Perfect. So I'm going to have my banjo. I'm going to have the elbow come out and go as far as I possibly can. And then it's going to glue into this. And then a very small piece will go from here into the Vectra M2. The container holds 265 gallons according to dimensional size, but it's actually 250 gallons of salt water. So you got water, you got salt, the displacement comes out to 250. And for a long, long time, I've had this container running. And I had these three valves I added at the top. I'm going to explain that here in a little while. And then it came down and there was a pump down here, but that's gone because it burned up. So there is the hole that's a three inch diameter hole on the container. And then I'm going to run some tubing and I'm planning to use this spa flex because I have it. And I'm going to use that pump right there. So now that I have all my fittings, I can go ahead and start to puzzle it all together which, you know, can be a little daunting, but actually it's not that hard. And I'm hoping this video will help you kind of see how it goes together for this or other similar projects where you're trying to do some plumbing on your tank. The bulkhead's installed. This is the general layout of how it's going to be. And now we're going to do some Teflon tape and some Teflon paste. The tape has to go with the thread so it doesn't peel off as you screw it in. And the paste helps seal this so there won't be a leak because this is a really important spot. I put some tubing under the vat to lift it up so I could actually turn this fitting round and round to screw it in. I cannot emphasize how important this connection is right here. If it leaks, you have to start over from this point all over again. The next parts are the bushing, the PVC pipe, and then the union that connects to the Vectra pump. And do not forget that outer knuckle. That's so important. If you forget to put that on while you're gluing, you're kind of stuck. That will glue into the gate valve, and the gate valve has to be lined up perfectly, and there can't be any leaks, because it all has to line up like this. With the pump's intake section completed, it's time to work on the output side, which is the vertical section. And in this case, I decided to use one and a half inch pipe going up. I covered the pump with paper towel so I don't drip any glue or solvent, or uh, even the cleaner, on the pump and ruin it. And I made that full run six feet tall out of inch and a half pipe, to give myself more flow rather than restricting it with one inch pipe going vertically. Here is the full assembly from a bird's eye view. The water will flow through the black pipe, through the gate valve, into the M2 pump. And then it will immediately increase in size to inch and a half and go vertically. At that point, there is a T fitting with a valve coming out that's one inch pipe, but the vertical is still inch and a half until it has to reduce down to one inch mainly because of the fittings that already existed that I did not feel like replacing on the poly tank itself. Quarter inch tubing that leads from my RODI system f pushes water into the poly tank from about 25 feet away and I have a cutoff valve. So I open that to make water when I need to collect 
like right now when I have to fill this thing to the top. So this is the painfully slow process that I'm used to that takes about two days, maybe two and a half days until it's full. All that time waiting for water to be collected is perfect to allow the glue to dry inside all the pipes and fittings to where it will be rock solid when it's time to flood it with water. With the container about two thirds full, now is the perfect time to see how the pump will hold up. So it's pushing water up about seven, eight, almost eight feet high through that pipe and then into the container. But what I didn't realize, it was only running at 10%. And I thought, wow, that's pretty decent flow for this little tiny pump. I'm happy and the amount of wattage was negligible. It was like 23 watts or something. So I tried it again. I turned it up to 100% and look at all that flow dumping in. It actually, it's really impressive. Again, I did not know that this little guy could keep up with this tank. I hoped it would and I'm glad it did because I didn't want to replumb it all over again. I believe I was marking the container every hour to see how much water was being collected. So this is my barrel of salt and it's made, it's called Salinity. It is from Aquavitro, and I looked in here and found my salinity bucket inside my salinity salt. It's all filled up with ROGI water. I don't even know how long it took. It took a few days, and uh, now it's ready for the salt. So it's been so long since I've made salt water, I have no idea how much to use specifically. So I did some Google searches, and it seems like about 1.6 pounds of salt uh, per five gallons will get me my number. Um, the other math is usually half a cup of salt per gallon. 250 gallons is 125 cups. So I'm starting off small, and uh, I have to also use something small. There's only a little bit of space in the top to pour in the salt. So I have these adorable little buckets from Aqua Vitro, which is actually the salt I'm using. And each of these little buckets holds 12 cups of salt. So I have two little buckets, which gives me 100, well, it gives me uh, 24 cups which by the way, I weighed these, it's 8.5 pounds each. So I'm gonna pour these in and I'm gonna have to do this five times plus a little bit more to get my target of 1.026. Kick in the time-lapse period. Uh, matter of fact, I wish life was actually this way when we had to do mundane tasks, like scoop salt into a small bucket and then scoop it into another small bucket and then carry the salt into here and then pour it uh, into the container after climbing a ladder a dozen times. But anyway, <laughs> I just wanted you to see what it's like. Uh, there's a lack of space at the ceiling, so it's really hard to put salt in this container. And I knew that from the beginning, but what can you do? The final five cups gets me to 125 cups. I'm gonna let that mix for a while, then I'm gonna check salinity and see where I'm at and see how much more I need to add or if that was enough. I built myself a small bracket to hold the power supply for the Vectra pump. And while you might think that it's uh, at risk of getting wet, it's up off the floor, it's against the wall, it's kind of in a safe spot. And the driver is mounted to the wall as well. So overall, I have a nice clean install that I'm happy with. I got another package from Amazon. So this is one inch flexible tubing, it's food grade and it's about 25 feet long. And while I wish it was a little bit more flexible, it's still something that will work. So as I was at Home Depot trying to find the one last fitting I needed to connect the tubing to the water change station, I was debating which of these to use. This is a straight hose barb. This is an angled hose barb. And I was thinking, well, here's the thing. I'm gonna have water coming out of the tubing, but then when I close the valve, I'll have water still stuck in the tubing. I need to drain that. So I was thinking, what can I install in the plumbing that can open to vent to drain out the water out of the tubing and have dry tubing when it's not in use? So then I realized I could probably use a union. So this union right here is threaded and threaded, and it's one inch, and this would screw right into it without any issue whatsoever. However, I, so then I was debating, do I want to do it this way? Or that's why I bought one of each so I could decide the other choice would be to go this way and have it installed. And then the other problem is that is a straight piece of pipe. So it needs to glue on. And this is threaded on this side. So I bought a second union. <laughs> I got both. This one is slip slip. But by taking the two apart, and I made sure that they worked in Home Depot properly, I can actually do half of one onto the other. So now if I combine these two, I now have a single one that is threaded on this side, slip on that side. I can mount the elbow in there. 
on the threaded side, which I'll use Teflon tape so it's nice and secure and won't leak. And then this will glue straight onto this pipe. Uh, so this is the tubing that I purchased, which is one inch tubing, but it's not long enough to reach the frag tank. So I had to get the next size up, which is 25 feet. <laughs> it's way more than I need. I probably need 15 feet, but so be it, whatever. Sometimes you just have to buy a little more than you need. And I do have an extra union for the future that is threaded one side, slip the other if any kind of need arose. Like for example, since I'm gonna have so much tubing, I could have a short run that's gonna fit this aquarium on one, and I could have the other one for the long run to the frag system. I mean, but, and so, but then when I'm not using it, I can go ahead and I can just disconnect this right at the union, leave this part on here, disconnect the tubing, It's easier to do when it's glued. <laughs> but with that secure in there, this would have the tubing coiled off. I can actually take all the tubing, I can drain it outside, and then I can set it behind the barrel out of the way until I'm ready to use it again. Since I'm only gonna use it once a month or so, uh, this seemed like a better solution than having tubing out in the open all the time. So that is my solution, and that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm very happy with where we're at at this point. Next, I have to rinse out the tubing to make sure it's nice and clean and there's nothing in it so that it's safe for my aquarium and for all my livestock. But there was one more thing I still needed to do. So I made this wooden thing that mounts to the wall that would support and hold the PVC pipe rigidly so that way when I yank on it or pull on it, I don't tear the plumbing apart or put too much tension on the actual PVC assembly. If you've made it this far into the video, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. So let's see it all in action. I actually had to do a water change yesterday. I had recently treated the frag tank for cyanobacteria and when you put that medicine in the water it kills the bacteria but then after three or four days you need to do a pretty decent water change. So what I do is I use a mag 18 with some one inch pipe that goes down the driveway and I pump the water out of the sump and out of the refuge and just as much water out of the bottom and I even took some out of the tank as well because I have so much salt water available I had plenty to work with. So I drained out about 40 gallons, I hooked up my tubing to the poly tank. And the only thing that I wish or that I need to do at some point is figure out a way to mount the tubing to the tank so it can't pop back out accidentally. But other than that, this is a very simple system of moving water without having to carry buckets. And I love that I can just twist a valve and start pushing salt water directly into the sump of either system. The nice thing about the M2 is it has plenty of strength to push this water over through this pipe. And if I need additional pressure, if I really want to move water, I could close those valves at the top of the poly tank so that all the water has to come out of this tubing and shoot into the sump. While the system is refilling, let's talk about those three valves at the top of the poly tank. Each one controls flow out of a, a different spot inside the container. So one's way up high, dumps water all the way to the bottom. One is about midway down in the container and one is about two thirds of the way down in the container. And the benefit of this is as the container's water is used up and the water line gets lower and lower, if I only had water dumping in the top, it would fall and hit the surface and it would sound like thunder in my house. By closing that one valve and opening up the medium valve, uh, I can continue to have that constant circulation. And then if I use up even more water, I can close that valve and open the third valve, which is even lower in the container. Keeping salt water in circulation and constantly moving keeps it from going stagnant and spoiling or going bad. So I always keep the salt water running. When I'm not using it, I run the pump at 10%. So it's just enough to keep water tumbling. But if I'm doing water changes, I'll turn it all the way up to 100%. Now that the water change is completed, all I have to do is clean up my mess. So I disconnect the union so I can coil up my tubing carefully. And what I have to do is I have to kind of lift the tubing and roll it up to force all the water in the tubing to fall into the sump because I don't want water sitting in the tubing while it's in storage. So I kind of go through this little process. <laughs> and then I can go ahead and I can just tuck it away behind, uh, I have this little spot that holds it nice and safely and cleanly and easily accessible the last thing I need to do someday is paint that wooden thing on the wall white so it matches the rest and is protected from water damage. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions you can ask in the comments and I hope that this little plumbing tutorial gave you some ideas and you can do something similar with your own setup and have something awesome to enjoy every single day.